Hi everybody, Amber Warren here at FMI. Um, we just wanted to take a few minutes and do a little chat about leaky gut, which is something that we talk about all the time with our patients and we really want our community to be very aware of it. So kind of the medical term for leaky gut is increased intestinal permeability. And what it really is, is our gut lining is very, very thin because that's where we absorb the majority of our nutrients. So it's actually thinner than a piece of my hair, one piece of hair, that's how thin your intestinal lining is. Um, because it's so thin, that means our gut lining is also very susceptible to damage. And there's a number of things that come in and drive cell damage. Um, I would venture to say that stress, toxins, and poor nutrition are probably gonna be the top three things that come in and damage the cells that line our intestinal tract and create what's called gap junctions. More on that later. Other things include pharmaceutical agents, anti-inflammatories like your Tylenol, Advil. Um, <clears throat> I already mentioned toxins in our environment, in our world. Um, a poor diet, right? Sugar, gluten, um, more of the standard American diet, those inflammatory foods that can come in and, and tear up our intestinal lining. So what actually happens is um, when we're passing food items or toxins that our body is that our body is trying to digest and then pass through our digestive system to eliminate, we want to grab onto the nutrients and passively absorb those nutrients into our bloodstream. But when we've got these gap junctions, which are these holes, if you will, in our intestinal lining, then all of a sudden food particles or toxins like glyphosate or different pesticides that are rampant in our, in our food, in our water, and even in our air, all of a sudden sneak through these gap junctions and they enter the bloodstream. And our, our bodies happen to be really brilliant. And just like it would attack a virus or a bacteria, it attacks that food particle or that toxin. And when that happens, we send the troops, right? We send our really um, smart immune system to attack this now food particle, um, just like it would attack a bacteria, right? So we send the troops and this can lead to a whole host of symptoms. We can get not just digestive upset, right? Of course, we see constipation and bloating and nausea and diarrhea, but we also see brain fog. We see a lot of anxiety and depression and insomnia, joint pain. I mean, there's really not a part of the body that this leaky gut phenomenon doesn't affect, right? So we've got this inflammation that's now really high because the body is constantly sending um, immune signals to attack this food particle or this toxin or this virus that's now inhabited our bloodstream. And so it leads to this chronic state of inflammation. That's another term we talk about a lot in functional medicine is chronic inflammation. Then eventually, if this process keeps going on without it being healed, that's where we start to get immune activation, right? We develop food allergies. A common, um, I think, misconception is that food allergies or food sensitivities is a root cause issue, and it's not. Um, the food is not inherently bad, although, you know, wheat and dairy and sugar and sometimes more inflammatory foods can technically sometimes be bad, but it's actually the immune system and the gut that's the issue. And if we get that to calm down and get that to heal so your body stops attacking the bad foods, then we can take care of the issue. Um, but autoimmunity gets turned on. The body then struggles to recognize self versus non-self. So instead of the body just killing off the bad guys, we now start to attack the joints and rheumatoid arthritis develops, or we attack the thyroid and Hashimoto's thyroiditis develops, or we attack other joints and an inflammatory arthritis ensues, or we attack the brain and we get multiple sclerosis. Um, so it's really us trying to figure out, does this person have leaky gut? Well, a lot of us do. It's just how significant is it? But more importantly, what's driving your leaky gut? Is it stress? I think it probably is for a lot of us. Is it a poor diet or an inflammatory food or a toxin? And again, it can be multifactorial. The first aim is to figure out what's driving it, get people off the pharmaceutical agent that might be causing leaky gut, fix the nutrient deficiency that might be driving the leaky gut. Um, our gut lining can be highly dependent on different nutrients to be able to get it to heal. We need certain amino acids um, to be able to get the lining to heal. So we go after that, we test for some of those deficiencies. Um, fiber, I think fiber is something that in in the whole unhealthy gut, leaky gut world, we don't talk about enough. Um, our guts are really dependent on fiber to fuel and feed the good beneficial bacteria so our guts can heal. Um, so we supplement with a lot of fiber. Our nutritionists are always working with our patients to 
have a diet that's very diverse and rich in both soluble and insoluble fiber. Um, supplements can be a really beautiful thing um, temporarily to get the gut to heal. We use a lot of things like L-glutamine and a specific kind of zinc. Um, like I mentioned, amino acids can be really beneficial to getting the gut to heal. Um, butyrate to help fuel what's called short chain fatty acids to help the good beneficial bacteria. We test people for low stomach acid, poor enzyme function. We really look at all aspects of digestion to optimize digestion to allow the right environment within the gut to be able to get it to heal. We take away stress. We give people different, um, a lot of different coping mechanisms to help with the stress that's burdening them. Our, our um, health coaches are certified in heart math which is a really beautiful technique to help the autonomic nervous system be able to heal. Um, we use a lot of different supplements to support the adrenal glands, support hormones. So again, we're just really managing root cause of what's driving the leaky gut, whether that be inadequate digestion, nutrient deficiency, stress, diet, all the things. So in functional medicine, we try and just throw um, a large net, right? Cast a wide net at our patients to try and figure out the different components that are driving the inflammation in the body and driving this leaky gut phenomenon, um, we talk about in functional medicine um, kind of this tack theory, where if you're sitting on six different tacks, if you only pull one out, if we just pull out the toxin or eliminate the inflammatory food, but we don't manage the stress, or we don't get that person sleeping, or we don't get them on an anti-inflammatory diet, the patient's not gonna feel better because only one tack is gone and you're still sitting on four of them. So it's really trying to think critically and get our patients to really understand what we're trying to do with root cause medicine.